And this is what eBay reselling is all about, right? You go to the boot sale, you buy a pack of cards for a couple of quid, send it off to America, get it graded, and that's sold. And that is sold for a stupidly high price. After a bit of negotiation with the buyer, that is sold for... Hey guys, Ian, the master of pieces here. I'm a part-time eBay reseller and this weekend right, has just been full of surprises. And the biggest surprise of all right, is I've actually sold my Max Verstappen Top Trumps card. Now, I picked this up at the boot sale for a couple of quid, sent it over to America to get it graded by SGC, it come back a nine. And I'm still in a little bit of shock by how much this is actually sold for. Now, I had it listed up on eBay for 450 pounds. Now, I did take an offer on it, me and the buyer have been back and forward a bit and we've settled on a price we're both happy with and i mean it is up in the hundreds and this is what ebay reselling is all about right buying cheap and trying to sell for as much profit as possible and i will cover this story about the card at the end of the video so if you're just interested in the sports card side of things skip to the end but in between that We'll cover what sold this weekend on eBay and also I went to the boot sale on Saturday morning and picked up some nice items and that should be bringing in some profit as well. So let's crack on with what sold. So my eBay sales on Friday can be summed up by volume, right? So there's not one single item here that is going to make me a lot of profit, but because I've sold seven or eight things, the actual total sum of all the profit is actually pretty decent at the end of the day. So the first sale we made, and we'll rattle through these a bit quick because there are a few, but I want to firstly give a massive shout out to Ryan Marsden, who has picked up these two Yoshi teddies and this mushroom off of Super Mario. Now, we all know Ryan, a big part of the reselling community, and he sent me a message to say that these are going to go great in his collection, and it's always nice to know that, you know, you're selling some to go into a collection. And right, I think all you need now is the Luigi, so I'm going to keep an eye out for, for a Luigi for you, and if I find it, I'll drop you a message. But Hey, thanks again. What do we sell these for? What do we agree on? Eight or nine pounds or something plus postage? But yeah, either way, thanks again. Next up, we sold this Matchbox Smash and Crash kind of track set. Now, it doesn't have the original cars, but it does have all the track. And actually, I have replaced the elastic bands in the starter. So that is packed up. That is ready to roll. Now, I paid a couple of quid in the charity shop for that. That's gone for 11 pounds plus postage. Next up, hey, look. This was a bit of a gamble, right? But it's not really, because I only paid 25 pence each for these bowls, so that's 50 pence. And these Batman bowls are gone for six pounds plus postage. They are nothing special whatsoever. They're no fancy brand. They're all pretty scratched up. And yes, it is a risk to send stuff like this through the post, but it's only 50 pence. I've only paid 50 pence. And yes, I'll have to pay for a small parcel, but if for whatever reason they get damaged and I'm gonna pack them so they don't, I, it's not going to cost me that much money, is it really? Next up, I'm glad this is gone. I bought four of these type of animated Disney store dolls ages ago and I overpaid for them big time. I paid four pounds each. This one's only gone for five pounds plus postage. And actually, I don't think I will be picking these up again because that seems to be the range and the value that they go for. They're just an awkward size to pack as well. They're just a little bit too tall to fit into my nice size boxes. But either way, Glad it's gone and I haven't lost money on it. This is probably the best sale of the day, right? And it is this this pair of Nike running shoes. Nice kind of silvery finish, great condition. I, I, I kind of love how the pink pops and then you've got the orange on the bottom. UK size five, they're called Downshifter Sixes. That's a great name, isn't it? Now these went for 15 pounds plus postage. Couldn't tell you what I paid for them, but for a pair of trainers like this, I pay anywhere up to about five pounds. Next up, and the final two sales, right, they are plushes. So this is a character off of Finding Dory. This is Destiny, Disney Store stamped at the back there. I paid either two or three pounds in the charity shop, can't remember, because I have bought a few of these before. That one has gone for eight pounds plus postage. And the final sale of the day is this Pocchio plush, and this is Pato, they, that is his pet there. Now, I got these as part of the swap I did with Connor the Welsh Poker Picker, and these two together have gone for £8 plus postage. These are characters off of quite a popular modern um, 
uh, kids show they're like little plaza scene figures but yeah they do make quite nice bundles so all in all that is i think seven sales like i said no real big hitters but my total profit at the end of friday 40 pounds pretty happy with that now we did actually have one more sale come in last night and remember when we went charity shopping and I picked up this Wales jersey? I was umming and ahhing about it when I had the time. I paid £4 but it has got everything going for it. It's retro, it's from the year 2000. It's size medium, long sleeve but that's the issue with it. Look, it's all cracked. So let me show you there, look, all that is cracked. Either way, it didn't matter because I managed to sell it for £22.50 all in, which is right where solds are telling me it should go for. And the best thing about it, right, is I've sold it to someone who lives in Cardiff as well. So what I actually did last night was, because Wales are playing Scotland this afternoon, I did message him and say that I will be passing near his house Saturday morning. Um, so I could drop it in. He was well chuffed. But then I said that I could come in and <laughs> drop it in after the car boot sale. So... It was going to be pretty early. It's actually half past eight now. So I asked him if that's okay. And he was like, yeah, maybe. He was actually out for a few beers last night. So I'm going to bang on the door, see if he's awake and just see what state he's in. <laughs> oh man, talk about hungover. It literally looked like he'd only just got back in, right? And um, yeah, it took a few knocks on the door. I actually had to text the number. You know, when you sell something, you get the buyer's details. I text the number and he comes down to answer the door and his eyes were all over the shop. But anyway, he's happy. And the main thing for me, right, is because I've delivered it, it means I get to keep the postage costs for extra profit. So happy days. Anyway, let's get back to the garage. Right, let me show you what I picked up at the boot sale this week. Now, I'm not going to show you every single item because some of them you've seen me pick up before anyway, and they do fall into nice categories. So I'll just give you a summary of those categories. Now, I spent 40 quid all in all, give or take. And the first category, of course, is toys and board games. Now, first step, as I've been saying in the past few videos, if you see an old school MD games, just check the price. You might be surprised. And this happens with this old school version of Connect 4. This goes for 10 or 11 pounds plus postage. And I find it amazing, right? How just because it's got the old box with the old photos on, that sells for more than what the newer version does. Exactly the same game. And I paid a couple of quid for that. This next one, though, was a little bit special. And... The reason I bought this and what made me excited about this is, yes, it looks like that perfection game. That's a good seller in itself. But you can see it's by a company called Dennis Fisher. If you see Dennis Fisher on any type of board game, definitely give it a look. And this Superfection game, which I've never seen it before, um, this should go for about £20 plus postage. So a nice fine. I paid £3 for that one. Now, along the theme, same theme, I found these. And these kind of... Yeah, I, I was taken back really by how much these are worth. Now these are Mega Block sets. You've got a Call of Duty character there, and you've got an Assassin's Creed model there. Now I've always thought Mega Blocks as being kind of a second-rate Lego product. You know, it's obviously it's obviously not Lego. It is Mega Blocks in its own right. But I've always seen that as being like a lesser product. But actually, because Mega Blocks do hold some licenses that Lego don't, it keeps this type of stuff at quite a high price. So that Call of Duty one there, paid £2, that could be going for anywhere 10 to 15 plus postage. And people have been asking 30 to £40 for that set there. Now, there aren't many sold, and <laughs> none sold at that price. I'll be looking for about 20 quid. I spent £3 on that one. Right, next theme then. And I've been picking up a lot more of these recently, and that is shoes. And to... I mean, the boot sale just seemed to be every single set of shoes was just for a pound. Like, it doesn't matter what seller I went to, they were all just a pound. So I picked up a couple of pairs of Vans, both of these. That's a four and a half size, that's a five size, that's high top. For a pound each, you've got to pick them up. I'll clean them up. They've got to be at least worth, what, eight to ten each, plus postage? Then that's just a look, bog standard pair of Reebok runners. That's got to be a tenner in them, surely. These were nice. Check these. These are a real retro pair of Nike Air shoes. Now, I can't remember the exact like model. It might be like Vengeance, something like that. But a good condition pair of old school Nike Air shoes in this style, you can be going 60 to 70 pounds for. But these ones are not good condition. Look, the front of that is kind of bending down. 
it's coming away at the back around there and that's happening on this shoe as well these are very very worn but i thought for a pound a pound these these are still hopefully go for 10 to 15 just because if you get a decent pair of 60 to 70 someone who doesn't want to spend that much might put up with a little bit of wear a little bit of minor damage that was my thinking anyway and then i found these two as well and i've never i've never really touched uggs because they are they are so faked there's so many counterfeit uggs around but i thought pound each let me just do a bit of research into them and i reckon these are all right you know i mean on the sole you've got the ugg logo in the center there um it's got a bit of bend bend in it as well in the left shoe there is like the label with the holograms on that it should have everything about these is pointing them to being real now if they are that's good because the, these can fetch a nice bit of money if they're real they should be going for about 30 odd quid maybe 20 quid in that condition i don't know but these ones here I, I i haven't even looked at these but these look look pretty common i should be getting what 15 to 20 quid for them if they're if, if they're real i don't know but yeah we, we shall see i found three hats as well new new era hats a couple of yankees hats and this um orlando magic hat as well they were two quid each oh i'm hoping to be oh, i hope to get 10 pounds each for those they are quite a small size so what's that six quid into 30 quid happy with that but then um, this was kind of my favorite little theme i found a pair of sennheiser headphones and a sony walkman now these sennheiser headphones never been opened paid four pounds for them Checking at sold listings, these should be going for about 30 quid all in. So yeah, nice little find that. But my favourite find of the day has to be this Sony Walkman here. Now, whenever I see Sony Walkmans at the boot sale and they're for the right price, I always pick them up. Now, nine times out of ten, they don't work. And I've never found a Walkman that has worked. There's always been something wrong with it. So I paid three pounds for this in the anticipation that it wasn't going to work. Because you can sell Sony Walkmans on the cassette players for about a tenner anyway for parts. But this one actually works. It's my first ever working Sony Walkman. And I think I'm going to keep this one. Because it has just got that retro nostalgic vibe to it. If I was to sell that, that's worth 30 to £35. Pounds. So that nearly pays for the boot sale in itself. I mean, well, those two, those have, those have certainly paid for the boot sale and put me in, 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 into profit. But that is my favourite find of the day for sure. Right. Let's run through what has sold on eBay for the rest of the weekend. So honestly, sales this weekend have been really quite slow on eBay, apart from one item which we'll get onto in a minute. But it follows the same vein as Friday, really. Lots of low value, low profit items that when you add up the total profit, it comes to a reasonable amount. And let's just run through these three items first. I mean, let's not spend much time because they, they've only gone for five or six pounds plus posters each. You've got a Disney store stamped Nala off of the Lion King there. You've got a kind of ticklish Elmo. And then you've got a travel version of, um, of of Yancey. Now all of those are bought in three or four pounds profit each. But these next two items I just want to spend a bit of time on. First up we've got this for real little brown dog here. And I am looking into these a lot more. Right there it is there. Hasbro for, for real. And it's this kind of like interactive pet. You know interactive plush really. Some of them go for a decent amount of money. Particularly the larger ones. I got a tiger up there. I'm hoping to get 25 to 30 quid for. But this one's gone for £8 plus postage. Oh, took about a month to sell. I only spent 50p on him. And this one. <laughs> I think. I mean this is mad right. See this little otter here. It's by Schleck. I mean you can't see it. Schleck's written on there. I would have paid what? No more than 50p. I probably spent like 20p on that at the boot sale. That's gone for £12 plus postage. Someone spent 12 quid on that little lotter there. I mean, if, if you collect it, you collect it. I mean, where's the value? I don't know. Either way, I'm happy because I've made a bit of profit on it. Right. So that's kind of the standard sales this weekend. Check this one out. Right now let's talk a little bit about this match for Stappen card here. Now this is by far my best single sale on eBay that I have ever had and it's for a graded top trumps card. I just cannot believe it. So where this all come from as a bit of context right I paid 
two to three pounds at the boot sale for the pack of Top Trump's card that that come in because I knew it had the match for Stappen card in. And at the time, I could have sold that card raw for 60 to 70 pounds. Nice little flip, eh? But I thought that the centering and the quality and the condition of the card was good enough to get it graded and I chose SGC and it come back as a nine. And I thought that was a really fair grade for a nice card. Now, because it has been graded, it is obviously worth more than what it is raw. But I didn't know where to price it and I didn't know when to sell it. But because we got the F1 season coming up, I thought the hype is going to be building. Now is a good time to get the best value for it. But how do you kind of gauge the price? Where, where is your even starting point? Because I have not seen any of these cards graded that I've sold before. There, there is a German version that's a bit newer. For a nine that goes for about a hundred pounds or so. This one's from 2016 in English. I think that makes it more valuable. And actually there is a 9.5 up on eBay for 500 pounds. So that is the cap. This is going to go for less than 500 because there's only a nine. So I knocked 50 quid off and I said, let's put it up 450 pounds. Let's entertain some offers. And in my head, I was thinking, 150 to 180 pounds something like that I, if that if an offer like that come in I would have I would have accepted it and I was getting low ball offers in all the time 20 pounds 30 pounds 50 pounds no good just ignore them then my first serious offer come in 200 pounds and I got a little bit excited here right I was thinking 200 pounds now let's just have a bit of a sense check here I paid two two to three pounds it cost me say 25 pounds to get it graded let's say that owes me 30 quid. If I sold that for 200 pounds, after fees and after postage and all that, I'm making 120, 130 quid profit, something like that. Now, for me, that is a great return. But then I, I started thinking, I was like, why, am, why would I accept the first offer which this guy's made? There, there is, there's literally no point in that because what I could have done is just not accepted it. And then if I decided that actually... I would be happy with £200 for that. I could have just changed my listing from £450 down to £200. And if the guy was serious, he could have bought it for the £200 at that point. So there was little risk in me countering at all. So what I did was that's what I did. I counted and I went back at £300. Now, the guy come back to me then 12 hours later. So I, I thought that I had scared him off. And he come back at £220. So... With that type of offer, I knew that there was probably not much left for him. You know, it's not as if I could have gone back for two. And I, I, could, I perhaps could have gone back at 250 and we may have settled on 230. But I thought 220 pounds. Again, let's let's just have a bit of a sense check here. This, this, this owes me 30 quid. And because I've sold it for 220 pounds, that's 140, 145 pounds profit I have made on that card. Absolutely fantastic. And that has just given me a lot of confidence in selling graded cards because I've got about 30 of these, not this card, but of other cards. And I have invested a fair amount. And you do see a lot of the sports card investors talking about selling cards for big money. And this isn't a big money sale in the scheme of cards. But it does show that just an eBay reseller like myself, if you make kind of the right guesses, in the cards to invest in you get lucky with with your grades there is some decent money to be made in these so i am i'm so happy with that one so guys if you enjoyed this video hit that like hit that subscribe and i'll catch up with you in the next one see you guys bye bye